Yesterday we couldn't practice, so we did some walkthrough because they played so many minutes. And I mean, if you look at the stats, you know, Jada played 37. They, they logged like over six miles on Friday. And so Saturday was just like a walk to get off your legs. And then to play here and with, to not do a lot of practice and just kind of mentally look at things and watch a lot of film. And then Helena played 45 minutes. I mean, that's, that's tough. And to play at the level she played for 45 minutes, I'm just so proud of them and their fight and their hustle. We made so many mistakes and we did a lot, of, but we played hard and we got 50-50 balls and stuff made up for where we made, our, made up for some deficiencies. And keep in mind, we did all of this with Esmeri falling, falling out. And is in Brea playing with foul trouble the whole game. Um, except for that third quarter, you guys are making good decisions about yeah. the three-point shots. Um, what do you think happens when they start going away from that? They just start. I don't know. I think um, well, third quarter to come out so flat and give up like three threes in a layup is just like that's a lack of focus. I don't know if um, there's a letdown at halftime, but now I said, okay, let me get them out so they can start shooting earlier. So I'm trying to find a way to address that, but I don't know if it's just, um, I need something to ignite them a little bit more. So that's something I have to correct because there's, there's a reason why we're doing that. And I don't know if it's just being young and not understanding, like the next team is kind of, they're looking to punch you at the next, uh, in the third quarter, but we need to start games. Um, we need to start third quarters the same way that we start games. And I don't know why we're not able to do that because it's been rough. Think that just getting behind made them think they needed to shoot the three-point shot more? I don't know. I think we were just settling a lot, and at one point we were settling for threes when we had, when we were in the bonus, even in the second quarter. So I don't want that. But then I look at the stats; we're 47% from the three. So I guess they felt good, and 47% with his Mary took two that were kind of weren't great in the stock clock. So we would have been like you know seven for 13. So um, I don't know. I think they just settle, and they're trying. People are trying to like get into the game. And we're open on the three a lot because of our percentages. So I think that sometimes that's enticing and you want to just do it. But um, we have to get better, I think, at just managing certain situations. When we're down, we're fighting back. So I see that we have that fight and we're resilient. But I think the, the um, awareness of when we haven't scored in a couple of possessions, we don't want a quick three-point shot at that point. We want to like move the ball and put pressure on the defense. And we're not, we don't understand those things yet because we're young. I mean, like think of overtime. We have three freshmen, who else is in the game? Um, three freshmen, a sophomore, who Kaylin didn't play a lot last year, so it's a young player. Three play freshmen, a sophomore, then a fifth year. I mean, that's hard against an experienced team that's upperclassmen. And a freshman, Brea, is going against a much, but like Peely's a better player, more seasoned, more experienced. I mean, and she, with four fouls guarding her, I think she did a really good job, because Peely is hard. And it's funny, because Peely's such a good player, it's like, Oh, we slowed her down. We slowed her down. She only had um, four for nine. She was only um, eight, had 18 points and whatever, seven rebounds, you know? That's like slowing her down and having a game plan to attack her. She's just so good. So what was the game plan specifically on TV? Uh, well, there were certain actions we didn't want. Her, she sets a lot of on balls and fakes a lot of handoffs. We didn't want her to get, she, they didn't get us once in that fake handoff action. You know, she dribbles out of guard and kind of keeps the ball and drives it. Um, we knew we had to guard on balls like um, not on balls, handoff on balls a lot. And when she's in a handoff on ball, it's really problematic because if you trap, then she pops. And there's like, it's a lot of distance and you're, and you're, you're helping away from really good three-point shooters. So that's hard. So we just kind of did some different things against that. So we were in those situations. And I thought, especially in the first half, we did really good off guard and their on balls, not letting their guards go downhill. But what hurt us, 34 hurt us, um, Young hurt us in the first half, not off that action, but then you stopped driving it. So we were like, well, she had six points, I think, really early in the game. So she she did a good job. She hurt us a little bit. But I thought overall, I think we did some good things besides the boxing out. I thought boxing, our rebounding has been pretty rough. When you, when Kaylin gives you the lead, 1.1 sec seconds left, mm -hmm. and you're like, do you flash back to last year at Absolutely. Utah? Absolutely, I did. So they ran the same play that they beat us on. So last year, um, as Mary got screened, it was as Mary and Helena, and then they threw a lob, and then as Mary got the foul. And Peely won the game off of free throws at Utah. So there was the same play. So we were really ready for that play. But I mean, if we had a mistake, it was, these are freshman mistakes. There was a switching situation. Skyler didn't switch, so the corner was wide open. I was like, thank God they didn't see that. Because they're going for, you know, you draw some out with one second, you gotta go, you gotta give the ball to Peely. 
Um, and that corner was wide open, like wide open. So those, that's good game film, and that's good teaching moments. Um, but yeah, I'm just, and, and she still got a look. She actually still caught it and tip, tipped it back in. So it could have been a little better pass, and that, we could have lost the game with that. So we just have to, we got to work on some things. How do you keep your young team kind of grounded when it, you know, there's some calls that fans clearly didn't like, yeah. but how do you just keep your team from kind of getting worked up? I think you just don't talk about it a lot because, like, we're worked up too as coaches. I don't get too worked up, but today I was fired up on a couple. Um, I think Lynn and I were both fired up on a couple calls, which is hard. These are hard games to officiate. They're physical. There's so much movement on offense. Like, I, I think it's tough. I would never want to be an official. Um, but I think you just can't get so caught up in that. Like, it, it is what it is. It, you can't change it. So it's like it's complaining about it. You just waste energy, and that's not a controllable. So I don't, I don't like that. So I try to calm them down. I try to not talk about it in front of them. Because if we're talking about it on the bench and complaining, then the bench starts complaining. You don't want that. So I think that's like negative energy that you have to move on. And I think you just have to adjust. You, you know if they're making those calls. You have to learn when you have experience to adjust or have communication. Ask the ref, hey, what am I doing? Why, why did I get that call? But like bitching at the refs and complaining, you're not going to get the next call. And it's not going to help you. And it just, you just have negative energy that doesn't help you make the next shot. So I don't like that particularly at all. So what went into the decision to have Sally play today right before, obviously, she has you said she has surgery coming. Yeah, she has surgery scheduled. Um, for her, it, it's totally her decision. Like, I think when a player in that situation, she obviously has a shoulder injury, and it's it's hard. So it's I leave it completely up to her, 100% up to her on how you feel and what you're willing to do. I mean, ideally, we would wanted her to wait if she felt good enough, but she's in a situation that's very hard to wait because it's always slipping out, like she can get hit at practice. And I think that's hard as a player psychologically. You know, it's painful every time it comes out, and I think it's hurting more and more. But she wanted to do it to try to help us, and that was a decision she made. I was like, well, I didn't even believe her at first. I was like, no. And then she said she, was, she said it yesterday, so she hadn't really walked through a lot, and she just wanted to find a way to help us. But even her being at 50% helped us because it gave us another body and one post-sub, which was would have been – it was huge today because as Mary went down, so – I mean, Sally helped us win this game. And, you know, losing her is a big loss for us. I mean, she can give us 15 points a game. And she's strong, she's physical, she can play for us a two, three, four, or five. Um, so a lo her loss, it, it, you know, when she gets surgery is, is a big hit for us. So we're, we're going to roll with the magnificent seven right now. <laughs> but we'll get ISIS back, so then we'll be eight. But eight is a short, a short bench. With these type of games, there, nothing's a blowout, so there's never a weekend to rest. So I think, um, you know, figuring out and managing our bodies. I mean, they're they're spent. They are spent today. But hey, that's fun. I mean, I, I think as a player, you have you know you're gonna play. You know you're gonna get opportunities. I think that's fun. I think that's good, right? Every, no one's playing less than 15 minutes. So I think um, I think there's a lot. That's po that's a positive thing from a player's perspective. Well, I didn't take an 11 shot. Did you ever think you'd see your? <coughs> Do that consistently? No, and that's in 45 minutes. <laughs> but no, but I, she needs to. I've been telling her this for years. She has to take 11 to 15 shots. We have to. But, you know, I, I got to find a way. I got to keep Esmeri and Brea on the floor more because Brea, Brea and um, Esmeri, we need to get them like 10 shots each. Not, and it's not all about shots, but it's just involvement to put pressure on defense. It's getting in position one-on-one -on -one for your better in rebounding position, stuff like that. But as Mary, I think, I think she's playing good. She played good today. It's just hard when you have fouls because she's an aggressive player. And when she gets a foul early, it completely changes the way she plays because then it's a second one. And she doesn't have the discipline to not go for that next block. So we're working with her much better than last year, um, working with her on not going for that block early when you already have a quick foul. So maybe waiting, and then if you have two in the third quarter, then you can go for like a, a risky play. But she's used to playing in a more physical league. The Pac-12 is not physical at all. The Pac-12 is, uh, it's not soft, but it's much softer than other leagues. And I think the Big 12 is more physical. And I think, um, I think we're more of a finesse league. So in the, in the, ga the games are called really tight, and she's not used to that. So she's had a huge adjustment in her game. That's why she's going to do better in Europe or in the WNBA because it is physical in Europe. There's hand check-in, there's like, you can play, so she's gonna really excel there. 
What was your message to the team after the game? Big, big win, number 15, Utah. Um, it, my message was like, like we found a way to get the job done, and we fought. And I'm just proud of their effort and their. They played with their hearts. I mean, they were at one point in the game, they were dead, like, barely able to run up and down the floor, but they were giving it their all. And um, I think they all played their hearts out. I mean, Jada was diving in the backcourt for 50 50 balls. I mean, Brea was so down when she got that fourth foul. Like, she was on the bench, and we were explaining to her, it's okay. Um, as Mary was upset herself that she fouled out, but other people stepped up when we needed them to. And I'm just proud of their fight. They could have hung their heads because we lost by we were so close to get on Friday. And this is a young team that hasn't had this adversity. And so it was good to see the them have a great mentality today and come into the game um, really wanting to win and showing that. And then being down 10 and fighting back and winning it. So I'm I'm more impressed with that because uh, we could have laid down and died. That we hit some big shots, we had some big plays, and it wasn't perfect, but we found a way to get the job done. So just proud of proud of their effort and their hearts. What does it mean for a young team like this to come off a weekend like this with, you know, Friday night and then today knocking off number 15? It means a lot. Um, it's so funny because I'm was i used to us being like <laughs> top 15. So it's weird, like, you're, you know, we're not ranked and having to be the, or being the underdog. Um, it's probably a lot easier being the underdog than the, ex, the, ex, the one that's expected to win. Really big because great crowd. Um, you know, th this is a tough weekend to get crowds because we're, here at men's game is Thursday, Friday, Saturday. there's four games in four days, it's hard. The crowds really showed up. Everybody was showing us so much love after Friday and winning at home is really important to Pac-12. It's gonna be hard to win on the road. So you need to at least split at home. So having people here and supporting us and playing at home and getting wins at home is, is like crucial for us. Um, so I, I just am happy that we, we found a way. Um, and just, I think, it would be a lot harder, in my opinion, to get these. We have the next four road, next games on the road, the next four games on the road. So, in my opinion, not winning one of these, it's hard to win any, any of those games, because as a young team, you'll get so down. Because you just start the Pac-12, you get swept. I think that would be a really hard situation to go on the road and steal games, because um, on the road it's going to be hard, period, to win. So I think that winning one of these and playing top teams so close and knowing we can play with anybody is going to give us momentum going into these next four games on the road. Um, just like psychologically, you know? So, and I think that they're believing and they see that we can do some things that, and they recognize the things that we have to improve on. And they're, they're doing whatever we ask them to do. And we had everybody out of position because we didn't have, I mean, people were playing positions they've never played. Helena at one point was guarding Peely. And a couple of times she asked me, I was like, you, me? Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> me? She, you saw the look at her face like, oh, damn. <laughs> but it's hard, you know, but we're doing it, and we're doing it to the best of our ability, and that's all you can ask as a coach. So I'm very happy. In um, Kaylin's mentality, she misses a shot at the end of regu regulation, mm -hmm. and, and she Basically, I mean, she came out offensively in that overtime, and and then ices it with the with the two free throws. Yeah, I think um, Kaylin's a, a gamer. Um, she's not afraid to take the last shot, and I think well, she thanked me for trusting her, but I, I trust her. Um, she's worked hard, and she's done so many great things. She's changed so much, even from a freshman to sophomore, and just in her mentality and her attention to um, detail and. Like, I've challenged her with some specific things on the court to get better at, and she's gotten better at them. So I'm really proud of her growth, and she's going to just continue to get better. And she, I'm not afraid to put the ball in her hand in last second situations because she's good at creating her shot. She's really hard to defend. And she's got, she wants those shots. She wants that, she wants that moment. So a lot of people don't. A lot of people shy away from those moments. And those are stressful moments. I don't know. I don't know if I'd be comfortable isolating one on one trying to win a game. I don't know if I'd want the ball in certain situations. But she likes that. She lives for that. So um, I love the way that her teammates also know when she's hot. They feed her, and they um, they know she's in the, the mindset to score sometimes, and, and she does that at a good level. So I'm I'm happy, and I think that it gives her a lot of confidence knowing that we let her do it once, and we trust her to do it again. So I think for her those things go a long way and it's just going to help her get better. You guys debuted um, new uniforms today. I know, but what do you think of them? I, saw, I hadn't seen them yet. I think I saw them yeah. like in the catalog a long time ago. I think they're really cool. They're kind of retro looking and they're bright red. I like them. I think they're good. Mateo? 
Are we going to use them a lot more often? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, that's my son. Um, reporter Mateo coming in hot. Um, yes, at home games. So we wear white for home, usually. So did you like them? Yeah. Okay, you can't get one, though. Sorry. But... Yeah, you can see them. Yeah. No, I think they're. Did you guys like them? I think the shorts were a little shorter, so that's what the girls were. Um, they were concerned with. So they don't have to roll them seven times, right? You know, we we wore long shorts when I played. Now they want short shorts. So. I'd go back to the eighties. I know. <laughs> I know they're short, and all the leggings and all this stuff. We didn't wear any of that. So all the pads and stuff. I'm like, they're soft nowadays. You got pads, but we didn't have any of that. We were just tough. <laughs>